Tennessee's next superstar is Dalton G'day. And it's not even close, regardless of sport. And we're already considering Nico to be a superstar, but I'm putting them up on the level of being that that type of national name because I believe Doc Connect and Caleb sees it a little bit differently according to his column on offthehooksports.com. I believe Doc Connect is the difference. And Jimmy Dyke said this on the broadcast. I'm not stealing it. I thought this a couple weeks ago. You know how I've been in, on Connect. Um, I think he's the guy that can take Tennessee deeper in the tournament. I think he's the guy that can overcome the Rick Barnes curse. But you see it a little different after the ball is won on a snow day. Your take brought to you by Sports Treasures, carrying over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook for the best sports memorabilia. Daily updates, go to facebook.com and go to Sports Treasures TN. That's Sports Treasures TN. And man, their daily updates are awesome. Lots of Tennessee stuff. I saw some Nico stuff as well. So set it up where you get their updates. Um, While most of the nation was very impressed by Dalton Connect, you took a different angle a little bit. Tell me what you saw out of the balls win on a, a snow day that had about 15 people at Thompson Bowling Arena because of the weather. But what have I said to you guys consistently about this about this basketball program? I don't care about any game they win from November to early March. All that matters is the three weeks of March for Rick Barnes' career now. That's it. That's the only thing that matters. So the only thing I'm watching for, and I've been watching this all year, all I've been watching for is what is something that could cost them in March? Okay. Now, they've addressed some issues that they had in the past, which should help them in March. And you are right. What's the biggest one? They have a go-to score. You're right. Dalton Connect. It's not the first time they've had a go-to score under Rick Barnes. Far from it. Okay. Um, even Dalton Connect's historical run. And I got to give him credit. 35 points, 39 points. Um, I think he's got a run of 30-point games. It's only matched by Grant Williams and Chris Lofton. And, and I believe McRae and Kevin Punter. Pretty darn good. He's in very elite category. He's the best scorer Rick Barnes has ever had at Tennessee. And he may be Rick Barnes' best scorer since Kevin Durant, and that's saying something. But Rick Barnes had Kevin Durant, and guess what? He only got to the second round of the tournament. So, you know what? Don't connect. Kevin Durant, you want to make that comparison? I think it's crazy, but even if you want to make that comparison, Kevin Durant got bounced out in the second round of the NCAA tournament with Rick Barnes. Defense has always been there. Defense doesn't win championships. I've told you guys, guys that a thousand times in March. The interior game was something that held back Tennessee last year because they need to be able to shoot threes to hang with teams that are red hot shooting the ball. And the only way they can do that is if they have an interior presence to take pressure off the uh, perimeter shooters. Jonas Adu, 19 points last night. He's proven to me he can do that. I So Jonas Adu's 19 points. That's not a storyline either because I already knew he could do that. The question for Tennessee... The thing that got exposed last week against Mississippi State, the first weakness I saw in this team that made me think they could be in trouble in March was front court depth. Because if you get in foul trouble, and you inevitably will because college basketball has the most inconsistent, worst officials in all sports. When you run into a officiating crew that overcalls everything in the post and your front court gets in foul trouble, how are you going to handle it? That happened to Tennessee last night. Toby Awaka got in foul trouble. J.P. Estrella came in. That's about the best nine minutes I've ever seen a big man play in his first nine minutes, quite honestly. Estrella dropped seven points. He was two of two. He was effective the whole time. And the only question I'm asking is, why hasn't Rick Barnes been playing J.P. Estrella more now? Because that guy looks like he can play, and you need your third big option. So going forward, J.P. Estrella should average about 12 minutes a game, 12 to 15. Adu and Awaka are your main ones. But you need Estrella getting enough minutes to where whenever there is foul trouble, he's ready to go, Dave. Because you don't want him rusty going out there in the middle of an NCAA tournament game if you get in foul trouble. I'm going to make a reach of a comparison. May I? Okay. Dalton Connect can bring the same thing to the table that Nico can. Okay? A play breaks down. Nico can make a play with his legs or with his arm, right? With his ability with ball placement. Keeps his eyes downfield. Rick Barnes' offense breaks down a lot in March, okay? Where there's this long scoring droughts where you're like, what the H is going on? I mean, what, what is happening? 
You kick the ball to Dalton Connect. He scores four, six points, and he keeps he keeps you from panic mode. That to me is why I think he's he's the key player more than anybody else on this team, more than any other two players on this team, in my opinion. And I know you disagree, but I think that that ability to come up with those four to six manufactured points, and by the way, no more comparing him to Kevin Durant, not by you, but anybody out there in the media, that is silly. He's one of the top five players that have ever picked up a basketball, okay? But Dalton Connect is going to probably be a first-round pick. I just think is savvy. I think uh, I think he is going to be the player that gets Tennessee out of a would be hole in March. And you would you would agree with that, right? That's a huge aspect of what's different about this Tennessee team than previous years. But the but Dave, I, I know you don't want to make the comparison, but since Kevin Durant was that much better, that's what Rick Barnes had in 2007 at Texas, and he couldn't get out of the second week second round. Okay, okay but name one other player on that 2007 team. I mean, they they just were not very good. I mean, uh, other than uh, other than Durant, I mean, Tennessee beat them on the road. Um, so no, you're no, that's the 06 team that they beat on the road. The they 06 beat Tennessee. Team, excuse me. Yeah, the 07 game with Durant. Well, that was one where Chris Lofton dropped off Kevin Durant from like 35 feet out. <laughs> I remember that? Yes. And so I, well, I get what that you're wasn't saying. a great team from top to bottom. I think this is a better team from top to bottom, but I don't think Connect is as good as Durant. Okay. I mean, look, that's, and I, I don't want to short sell Dalton Connect. What he's doing is insane. And I guess I should actually start for a minute and just be fair. Dalton Connect is an incredible player. And Dalton Connect, if I've told you guys this, and I'll keep saying it, if the NCAA tournament were three game series, five game series, a best of three, best of five, I'd have Tennessee winning it all easily. They're not. It's a win or go home. And I still don't know if Tennessee has everything in place to withstand a team going off shooting the ball. Now you're right. Don't connect helps that a lot, a lot, but part of what helps Don't connect Dave, one of the big things that helps Don't connect. And this is my big point. What did they do do last night? 19 points, right? Mm -hmm. He he had a double, double on Saturday against Georgia. Don't connect. Can't be Don't connect unless a do, unless the inside game is an offensive threat. Is, is that fair? Would you agree with me on that? That Don't yes. Connect can't do what he does without the inside game being a threat. Uh, I think he can't do it as effectively. I think he's a good enough scorer where he could he could ISO and still make things happen. I really do. But the I ISO only a... ISO only works if you have to account for the big down low. Well, yeah, but I think you could take four guys and have them stand next to Rick Barnes, and Don't Connect is probably going to score one on one with one out of three times. I'm not saying all the time, but I think he's that good of a scorer. I, I want to throw some numbers at you uh, via the uh, Tennessee media guide. Uh, 35 plus points, Grant Williams, uh, 43 at Vanderbilt. Dalton Connect, 39 versus Florida. Grant Williams, 37 at Vanderbilt. Dalton Connect, 37 at North Carolina. Dalton Connect, 36 at Georgia. Kevin Punter, 36, uh, South Carolina. Jordan McRae, 35 at Georgia. Yeah, uh, that's that's really, really good. And this, I thought, was very interesting as well. Uh, this, I think, was texted out by John Reed. Uh, Grant with 85 points versus uh, Vanderbilt, West Virginia, and South Carolina. Punter had 85, Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, and South Carolina. McCray, 85, A&M, Florida, and Georgia. Lofton, 89, Kentucky, Georgia, and Auburn. And I think we would agree that um, Lofton's – offense and Tennessee's offense as at the time was more about scoring than Rick Barnes, who likes to play defense. I, th I think he's an elite player. Um, and I, I, I just don't think that uh, his importance can be overstated when it comes March time. This is it. Oh, I agree. But the importance is we're not talking about Tennessee just getting out of the first round. Tennessee's got her first weekend. Tennessee's got to make a final four run. I mean, Dave, am, can we call this season a bust if Tennessee doesn't make the Final Four? Uh, are we at that I, point? I would, with Rick call, I would, I would call it a bust if they didn't make the Elite Eight. I'll give you that. Okay. Uh, because... I don't think Final Four is 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 an absolute or or necessary to affirm what this program is, but this this program is good enough where. 
if you don't make if you just make the Sweet 16, you've got to take a hard look at Rick Barnes and the future of your program. Not necessarily for 2025, but you've got to start thinking, is it time to bring in a young coach? Um, because you have a lot of cachet. And don't think for a second that when they turn that Food City Center, which should still be called the Thompson Bowling Arena, when they turn it into an entertainment district, that's going to wow some coaches. You can go out and literally in three years, when they get that thing done, you can wow any coach in the world. You can go after anybody you want to. You should consider yourself a blue blood at that point. And I know you don't have the record or the history, but you have enough in your favor where you should be able to go out and hire anybody you want. Rick Barnes' successor, whether or not he's fired or whether or not he decides to retire, which probably the latter, will be uber successful at Tennessee. Guarantee you that. Oh, I'm with you on that. Tennessee is on very solid ground as a basketball program with or without with or without Rick Barnes. And um, I'm sure Dave, as somebody who covered certain Tennessee basketball programs, you're happy to see a coach just actually be involved with coaching the Tennessee basketball program right now, <laughs> rather than and golfing and bringing back with his golf club, Jerry Green style. Or, wa or watching soap operas in the day. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I do believe Rick Barnes is very, but Rick Barnes is a, is you ever felt that March Madness was overcoached? You ever watched NCAA basketball? You, you ever feel like college basketball can be overcoached sometimes? And I actually tend to think it's undercoached. I think there are too many coaches who want you to fight through a drought and not take a timeout because at that point, if you take a timeout, you've got to draw up a play. I think it's undercoached. Really? See, I always felt it was overcoached with the smaller schools. I always felt it was overcoached and they, because I always felt like Rick Barnes overcoached his team, quite honestly. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but I always felt like he overcoaches his team to the point where in March it's, they're just worn down because. Oh, of that. no, no, no. Yeah. I definitely agree with that over the course of a season, but in March decisions that are made sometimes to me are, are undercoached. Let me ask you this. Who does Dalton connect? remind you of do not say kevin durant <laughs> um and we had a couple I people talk... I, I didn't know that thunder dan would make an appearance dan marley um uh, makes an appearance i think he's i think he's better than marley actually who was a very good player borderline hall of fame player might be in the hall of fame since basketball takes into account uh what you did in, in college as well uh i have trouble coming up with uh, a comparison. What about you, Caleb? Who's a good swing man who can take you to the basket and still shoot? You know, one guy who really kind of stands out to me is um, he's a current head coach and he won a national championship and he goes by the name of John Shire at Duke back in 2009, 2010. Shire yeah. was at Shire averaged 18 points that year. He was 6'5, 190. Um, he was 38% from three, always found a way to get to the basket. He wasn't even that efficient, but he, you know, the, when everything broke down, they went to John Shire. And I'm not just making the comparison because they're both white, okay, before anybody comes for me, <laughs> right? But I do see John Shire more than, yeah, I'm going to go John Shire. I see a lot of John Shire and Dalton Connect. John Shire was 6'5", 190, Dalton Connect is 6'6", 195. Um, that's probably the closest comparison. When everything broke down, Coach K would just go to John Shire because Kyle Singler was on that. That, that was a team with Kyle Singler, Nolan Smith, uh, Miles Plumley, And when everything broke down, John Shire took it over. Almost won ACC Player of the Year, but Gravis Vasquez was at dominating that year. So, yeah, I'll go John Shire. My comparison is, and we want to hear from you on the message board, what you think it is. Uh, mine's Jason Tatum. Um, I, I think he's very similar to Jason Tatum. I think, and there he's able to take it to the rack. He's a very competent shooter. Um, and I think he's just a natural scorer. I think he actually has a little bit more drive than Tatum. My question is for you, as we get some of your comps on the message board, is he the best scorer since Allen Houston that Tennessee has had? Now, that means we're skipping over guys like Grant Williams. It means we're skipping over guys like, I don't know, a Chris Lofton. We're skipping over some pretty good guys. But I don't think we're that far away from making that comparison. Best score from out, since Allen Houston. And I'll tell you this, too. Allen Houston's offense was either spot up and shoot or ISO. 
So Alan Houston's dad was the coach. And if anybody's been around little league sports, you know that the, 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 if the coach's uh, son is part of the team, he's going to get more opportunity. So not to discount Alan Houston at all, but uh, I think he's the best scorer since Alan Houston. And I'm going to go ahead and say it also, it didn't help that Alan Houston was the only scorer on those Tennessee teams. <laughs> so it's very true. Um, Here, Wade didn't I, I know, what was what was their option? Just to football throw it from half court and hope it goes in? <laughs> Probably. Um, so what I will say is here's the thing that compares here's why the comparison to Houston is not as adept as apt to me. Ally Houston was more of a spot up shooter. Ally Houston was almost Chris Lofton at 6'6, wasn't he? If Chris Lofton were 6'6, that was Alan Houston to a certain degree. Maybe Chris Lofton was a better shooter, but Alan Houston was a spot up shooter who could drive. Don Connect, I think, is a lot more physical than Alan Houston. I think Don Connect does embrace getting into the paint and taking the hits, or and he's also not as good from outside as Alan Houston is. Last two games notwithstanding, I know everybody's going to be like, he's going 8 of 10 from 3 the last two games. Yeah, okay, over a course of like a season, though, I would take Alan Houston as an outside shooter over Dalton Connect. But I think Connect can withstand more punishment going into the paint than Alan Houston could. Because I think Alan Houston, his, his what he, totally, you saw him, his whole... I 100% hmm. agree. I think he can take it to the rack better. I think he's okay with contact. And people are agreeing with you on the message board. I think you nailed it. I mean... I don't want to come on here and say after one game and um, a half of a season that he's better than Allen Houston, but he might be. Yeah. He might be. No, you're <laughs> right. he, he might be. And by the way, I'm seeing comparisons because someone's bringing up that Shire was closer to a point guard than Don't Connect is. If you watch Don't Connect, he easily could play point guard. He is a wing who actually makes the right pass every time the paint collapses on him. So he's very smart with that. It's just Tennessee has the guy Ziegler. So they don't really need Don't Connect to do that quite honestly to run the offense but now, he I, could. Th that's where i am i'm at i'm at tatum and so you're at shire uh anybody else if you want to wow we have uh the ghost of general Nealon saying connect is a beast best since bernard king Whew. okay that first of all if you do that then you have he's not even better than dale ellis who followed bernard king just yet i don't think he can be better than bernard king but i think he could be better than dale ellis Oh, he could be a, better than Dale Ellis, but he's not yet. Yeah. I don't think he has the – Bernard King without the injury was an elite player in the NBA. He may have been the best player of all time without the injury. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, not, I'm not putting him anywhere close to that. But I think the Dale Ellis, who turned into a spot-up shooter, I think Connect can be better than Dale Ellis. Yeah. he. I, I could give you that. And funny, if we talk about pure talent as these wing scorers, it's funny you bring him up. If Vince – because we compared him yesterday. In terms of – if. In terms of just raw abilities, Vincent Yarbrough may have been the best player Tennessee ever had. He just didn't have the mental toughness. Is, is that fair to say, though, that actually in terms of actual abilities, he could have been – he had NFL, he had NBA Hall of Fame potential, didn't he? If he had the yes. mentality. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, we let's not sell Chris Lofton short either because I still think the cancer battle affected him long term. And with the NBA, you have to be so lucky in making a team – I mean, Lofton could have made the right team, got drafted at the right point had he had a good senior year and stuck around the NBA because of his shooting ability for a long, long time, Caleb. And I, I, I don't, I still think his cancer battle had not only an effect on his last year at UT, but had an effect on, on NBA scouts. This sounds hardcore, but if you're a scout, do you wonder if the cancer could reoccur? I mean, that is something well, like a health is... issue that you would look at. Chris Lofton and Ron Slee are the two biggest victims of the stupidity of NBA GMs for a long time. And I talked to Ron Slee about this, and I'd love to talk to Chris Lofton about this. Dave, if you remember Ron Slee, we talked about it. NBA GMs believed if you either have to be wildly athletic or you have to be 6'11 to be a power forward, right? That's what they believed for the longest time. And they didn't see the value in a Ron Slee who could use his width more than his length underneath the basket. And he could actually stretch the court from shooting from outside. You would think that Charles Barkley would have shown that that's possible, but they still rejected it for the longest time. Chris Lofton, NBA scouts believe that just being an elite shooter wasn't enough. They thought you either had to be 6'6", or if you are 5'10 or 11, you had to be really quick and drive, be able to drive to the basket. They did not see the value in a guy who maybe only, he was listed as 6'1". Chris Lofton was 5'11". Let's call it what it is. If you've ever been around him, he was 5'11". He was not 6'1". And oh, I was, I was, I was harder than Chris Lofton. We stood next to each other. 
Yeah, so I'm, you know. And I'm right at six feet. What the NBA, the NBA GMs were so dumb. They felt there was such a, it was the, it was Pete Calipari era with Derrick Rose in the dribble drive area that they felt all guards should be able to slash to the basket no matter what. And there was no desire for a guy who could just stretch the court with his shooting. I guarantee you if Chris Lofton and Ron Slay were 10 years younger, they'd both be in the league right now still playing. Ron Slay would be starting. Chris Lofton would be a six man off the bench right now if 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 they had come out right now because Chris Lofton was he was pre Steph Curry. Steph Curry changed everything about how NBA scout now he's shorter than Steph Curry. I'm not trying to say he's like Steph Curry, but Steph Curry and he wasn't every- it, it, no but that's a good comparison. And he wasn't given the green lot to shoot from 38 feet either. Um but had he been I'm not sure that he couldn't make it. By the way I challenged Chris Lofton to a shooting contest once via Tennessee Sports Information Department, and uh, they they declined. Who do you think would have won? Uh, I'm pretty sure Chris Lofton would have won, Dave. I would have. Um, Here are the rules. Okay, we're at Thompson Bowling Arena, and we're waiting for the players to come out to interview them before practice. And I said uh, to Tom uh, Satkobiak, I said, I want to challenge Chris Lofton to a shooting contest. And he goes, ah, ha, ha. And I said, no, seriously. So we were allowed to shoot on the court before the players came out. And I said, the rule is – Okay, listen to this. The rule is you have to throw it football style from half court. And Tom said, Tom said, I'm still putting my money on Chris Lofton. So I said, I bet you I can hit one of those within five shots. Fourth shot, nailed it. And I was like, bring Chris out. Tom goes, I'm not bringing him out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling you, I I had a good arm when it came to football. Now my shoulder's blown, so you'll have to take my word for it. 